Look at this. Oh, yes, I did it again. Ugh. I cut myself with a knife in the same place on both fingers within 60 seconds of each other. <laughs> I mean, who, that's, I mean, there's, there's a life lesson there. Don't play with sharp things, but here we are. What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here, and welcome back to another episode. Another episode. We're already back at it. Number two of PM Edits My Shots, where you send me your photos and I edit them. You guys loved the first one. It was so much fun. I loved it. I got so many awesome text messages and emails and messages on, on everything saying how much fun it was and that they would love to see another one, and hopefully one of your photos will pop up somewhere uh, in the not too distant future. I'm gonna do five photos today. Now it's important to say again, I wanna throw out these disclaimers before you watch these videos, which are the following. One, I'm not the best editor in the world. I make mistakes just like every other editor does. This is for fun. Number two, I'm not claiming that my edits make any of these photos better. The photos now, from the past, and the future, anything like that. I'm just having a good time. I'm just editing, I'm just doing my thing. This is my style, this is how I like to manipulate photos. Sometimes Sometimes a lot, sometimes not at all. Sometimes I like to flip around shadows on mountains by accident. And thank you for submitting them. Thank you so much for submitting them and letting me edit them in front of millions of people. That's a lot of pressure for you. It's a lot of pressure for me, but it's, it's a good time. So if you like this kind of thing, stick around. If you don't, take a hike. All right, let's jump into edit number one, which is given to us by Rory Scrivener. Rory is a British photographer who recently went on a trip to Slovenia to photograph Lake Bled, which is hilarious because in the last episode, I said I would love to do that. So here we are now getting to edit photos from Lake Bled. I just love this series. This is great. So here are the raw shots that Rory took. We got one, two, and three here. I'm gonna edit a few of these. I'm gonna do a couple different things to each of these, play around with the crops, but already, man, like these are awesome. Straight out of camera. These are amazing. Now they are JPEGs, so keep in mind that if you watch this editing process, if anything gets a little more damaged than normal, it's because uh, Rory didn't give me the raw photos. So in the future, if you're gonna up, if you're gonna send me photos, please make sure they're raw because it just makes it a little bit better. But good thing for us and for you, Rory, is that you exposed these beautifully. So there's like not even really much that needs to happen. Like these look awesome already. All right, looking at this first photo here, it looks amazing. I'm not so much of a fan of all of the, the stuff on the left because it is just like a big boardwalk. I like the money shot for me, like the focal point is on that right side. That's where it's looking tasty. The light is just, mm. <laughs> it's just wrapping around, it's 3D, it looks delicious. So, so I edited this photo, I added some grain, I kind of kept it muted, kept it kind of soft and quiet because it feels like a nice calm scene. It feels like I'm sitting there in a canoe, early morning, no one's awake yet, the mist just cleared, and we're snapping pics. Nothing crazy, nothing electric, nothing super commercial. It just feels like a nice, beautiful piece of art. I'm gonna probably bring this into Photoshop and content aware out the rest of that doc just like that, and then I'll probably clone stamp that out so that that corner looks Looks good, so I kind of left it there and I moved on to the next photo, which was a nice wide horizontal version of this same lake. And I did the same thing. I was just kind of getting that painting vibe. So when I was editing this, I was going for more muted colors, more earth tone colors. I was throwing in that extra green to try and give that like vintage film vibe, painting museum, because it's just such a pretty scene. It just looks so good. It really doesn't need anything at all. So I didn't really go overkill with it. The reflections are amazing. A little pump of clarity, a little bit of contrast. Messed around with the blues a little bit. I was gonna try and pull a little more pink and purple out of the sky because there is a lot of detail there. Like, there is a lot. It's, it would be so easy to make this look like a banging sunset with the color in the sky, but I wanted to keep that soft, serene feel. So this is what we ended up with for that. I didn't want to crop this one four by five. The landscape, the whole reflection across that horizon, that's what makes this really unique. So I left it the way it was. He had another shot that we threw in here that we, it was great. Again, like, look at the framing on this. Framed it through these trees. Beautiful depth of feel. Field, the stacks, right? We've got three layers here. We've got the foreground, which is the trees that he's shooting through. We've got Lake Bled itself, like the, the chapel and the trees and everybody in the steps. And then we have the trees in the background. So we've got stacked layers in this photo. When you have a photo that's stacked like that, it's so rich. There's so much going on and it's just composed beautifully. So all I did for this, adjusted a little bit of the colors, brought that mood in by dampening everything but the reds and the oranges and the greens are just ever so slightly saturated. Saturated, and then I removed everybody off the steps. That's it. I left the boats there. There's people coming off the boats, but all the people taking photos on the steps were a little distracting. So, gotta go. P. 
peace out, they're gone. So that was uh, edit number three from Rory. Dude, incredible photos, keep up the great work. His Instagram account and everything else was linked there. If you guys wanna support these people, hop on, give them some love, tell them that you found them through this video. I'm sure it'll make their day. Double tap some IGs, we all love that. Moving on to edit number two. Edit number two comes from Gilly Brend. Gilly, I love that. Gilly? It could be either. Gilly's from the Faroe Islands, loves photography, filmmaking, Instagram is as follows. Boop, let's take a look at it. Four by five cropped that and I put the subjects at the bottom to give me a little more of that negative space up top, but you guys know, mm, I love. And I graded this to feel again, like an old film camera. Like we're shooting on Portra 400, medium format, contact 645, snap this, deep, deep colors, good saturation. The oranges look amazing, the reds look amazing. It just, this photo gives you the feels. It looks like it may have been taken years and years and years ago, but the depth of field, the plane of focus, everything in this photo is great. It's just a great capture. The power line was very distracting, so I took out the power line itself. From that point, I was like, hmm, kinda wanna get rid of the pole too, but that cuts into the roof of the house, so I took a little bit of extra time, got rid of the pole, recreated a little bit of that roof of the house just so that the distraction was gone, because the focal point here is this little dude and the golden retriever, it's perfect. I don't want anything detracting from that. The two planters right in the middle of the street, also distracting, gone, got rid of them. Now we've got like a nice open slate. Great capture, Gilly, thank you so much for submitting that. Had an amazing time editing it, so again, Thanks. Next up, Megan Hawkins, 17 years old, snapped this super cool photo of a girl here wearing headphones with what looks to be something passing in front of the frame. And maybe the shutter was dragged and it caused this really cool effect in front of the subject. And it was just so unique that I loved it. The second I saw it, I was like, this is super cool. What a, what a cool perspective of whatever's happening here. I wanna know more about the story. I wanna know more context. And sometimes when I feel that about a photo, I think, well, that's a great photo. It's making me think that I wanna know more about it, which is cool, so job complete. Let's take a look at the raw photo here. There wasn't much to be done because there's not like much of a background or foreground. It's just kind of like the whole subject is in one focal plane. The blur is what's selling that photo. I just kind of wanted to bring that out a little bit more. So all I did was dehazed a little bit, some clarity, some contrast. Again, I warmed it up, going for those warm vibes right now, maybe because I'm so cold here in Canada that I'm just like longing for the warmth of the sun. <laughs> Literally, it's negative 40 yesterday. What is What does that even mean? My nose started bleeding. I'm not even kidding, I was in Toronto, it's, anyway. Again, didn't wanna go four by five crop on this. Like, I kinda hope that on Instagram, things start going from four by five being trendy back to regular photos being trendy because regular photos are so much better to post because you get the whole photo. If I had cropped this four by five, you would have missed all the cool bokeh and, and, and blur and everything that makes this photo cool would be almost gone had I just cropped it in the center. So all I did really like, you know, drop the blacks a little bit, that curve adjustment, the clarity, the contrast, warmed it up, gave it that film vibe, added a little bit more grain. There you go, it's done. Megan, that's a super cool photo. Thank you so much for submitting it. Really appreciate it. Sorry I can't pronounce the uh, the state that you're from. All right, next up we have from Portland, Oregon, Lindsay and Daniel Stark, husband and wife, photography team, part of the Avengers. I mean, you must get that all the time, man. Stark like Tony Stark? I'm sorry I even said it. Like, you must just be like, come on, man, like, clever. Anyway, great photos. Killing the scene here in Portland. We got two portraits and a photo which looks like was taken with one of your weddings. The mountains in the background, it looks amazing. Nicely framed again with the trees. So let's start with the portraits. Number one, this portrait is pretty underexposed. So when I'm looking at it straight off, there's enough detail there. Like you can see pretty much all her features, her face, her eyes, her hair, beautiful rim light happening. So this was backlit, hair looks amazing. So that's gonna really pop when this edit is finished. First off, I'm gonna start by lifting the exposure, lifting the shadows, lifting the whites, getting that tone curve going so that we can see what we're working with a little bit more. See the skin tones, there's a little bit heavy on the red side for me. So I brought the reds down, brought the orange down, made that skin tone a little more even. Then I started playing with the greens in the background. I wanted to mute those greens. I'm going for it again, maybe like a, a film stock kind of look, like a Pro 400H film, which is another Fuji film stock, which was one of my favorites when I used to shoot weddings in film. And you don't know fear until you've shot a wedding entirely in film. Then sent those rolls to California to get processed and scanned with no backups. I don't even know. I would never do that today. Fearless and horribly irresponsible, but they looked great. One of the best things about film and why everyone's always trying to recreate that look is it just looks so good. And a lot of the times when you're shooting with a film camera, you don't need to do anything. Once it's scanned and it's processed, you get it back and you're like, what? This looks incredible. I don't like, those are the days. If you haven't shot film, highly recommend it. Back to the portrait. 
So I don't wanna pump the saturation too much. I don't want this to be over sharpened. I don't want the clarity to be too high. I don't want it to just pop, but that's not what I'm going for. That's a little too commercial. This portrait specifically feels like it could be a little more pastel, a little softer. So that's the look I went for and we ended up with something that looks like this. So it's got that nice soft feel. This looks like Portra 400H. For my friends that know me, when I used to shoot with that Contax, if you're watching right now, Mike, come on, man. Moving on to the next photo, which was another shot of this girl, which I decided to do the exact same thing. So everything I did to the first photo, I did to this one. Highlights to bring that hair out of the background. We got a beautiful flare coming in from the right side, and it has that vintage summer vibe that we're at the cottage, we're shooting film. It feels like a postcard you'd send to somebody. It's just, it's, I like it. It's got a good feel to it. So I was happy that both those edits worked almost perfectly together. That was the second portrait there. And then we're looking at photo number three, which was the couple at the wedding in front of this beautiful landscape. Now looking at the original again, a little underexposed, but I believe this is underexposed for a reason. These people clearly know how to take photos because if you had just exposed for the couple, you'd lose a lot of detail in the background. You wouldn't see the mountains. You wouldn't see those rolling layers, those stacked layers that we talked about earlier. We've got the foreground stack with those trees. We've got the couple in the middle. We've got the mountains in the background. So again, those three layers makes for a great photo, makes for great composition. The veil blowing in the wind, like that's amazing timing. You you lift that veil up, have someone drop it, run back, snap those photos. Those little things, especially with weddings, are what's gonna make these photos stand out. It's gonna make them pop, it's gonna make them look better than the rest. Now that the background's exposed nicely, all I really have to do is lift the shadows and that's gonna reveal the couple even more. So doing that, couple highlight adjustments, clarity contrast, warming it up, giving it that film vibe again. For this one, I used one of my presets, which was Louise, toned it down from there, warmed it up a little bit, went into the HSL tabs and played with the orange to give it that nice feel, that nice glow. I wanted that skin to feel warm because those oranges go great with the navy of his suit that matches the blue in the background. All these things work together to give you uh, the final edit, which looks a little bit like this. And I'm just, I'm really psyched with how this one turned out. That's a great shot. I wish I had wedding photos like that. Love that. Even like the brown and the shoes just looks great. Everything Everything matches perfectly. So that's a great capture, guys. Great job, keep up the good work. Thank you so much for submitting. Good luck with your two kids. I know the feeling, it's a good time. Thanks so much. So next up we have Eric Weed, who's an architect from Indianapolis who sent some beautiful raw photos from a trip to London. Actually, it's not a trip. He says here that he used to work in London. Here's his Instagram, everything is listed below. Really cool photo here. I believe the building that we're looking at here is called the Gherkin and it is like engulfed in fog, which is amazing because it's already there. And in the foreground of this photo, we've got this beautiful architecture that is so different from anything that I'm used to. All the lights from these buildings reflecting off the building in the background. That's just caped in fog. So let's fast forward, I'll show you my edit. Boom, that's what I came up with. I used my preset Ember as the base because Ember strips a lot of color from photos, leaving the warm tones. As you can see, a, a theme here in today's edits is I'm going warm, I'm going vintage. This one I wanted to feel a little bit more like Batman Begins. It felt like a little more like a Christopher Nolan film. Blue, but very muted. Some greens, that super filmic cinematic look. So what I did is stripped all the colors. That fog makes it feel ominous. And what I really did is try tried to pop the color of all the lights in the windows. So I added masks to every single window and adjusted the intensity of the tint. So I made that a little more orange, upped the exposure a little bit in contrast, and I duplicated those masks and moved them over every single window so they really stood out. So what you get after is a photo that looks pretty dark, pretty moody, very Batman Begins. I'm excited. I love this photo. It looks amazing. Thank you so much, Eric, for submitting this. Great capture. I wish it was mine because I want to put it on Instagram right now because it would match my grid perfectly. Very jealous. Okay, the last photo of the day is from Agata from Poland, and this photo is recently from a trip that was taken to Iceland at the beginning of 2019, where the northern lights were clearly captured, looking amazing. One of the first things I did and why I chose this photo is because it was very challenging for me. It was very underexposed, which meant I was gonna have to pump the exposure, pump the shadows, pump all those things to try and see if there was detail to be recovered. Now, it was a raw photo, so for that instance, I was able to get something. But just check this out. I brought this into Lightroom, just move the exposure over and then, oh, instantly, 
the landscape is revealed. You can see incredible northern lights in the sky, stars, there's mountains in the background. It's, it's an incredible picture, but you see almost none of that from the raw photo. So it just goes to show you how much information is actually stored within a raw photo. And that's always why you should be shooting in raw, not JPEG. The problem I was having is when I was using the exposure sliders and trying the tone curves and the shadows, every time I would try to make this a bit lighter, it would get very grainy. Like, look, if I zoom into the noise here, it looks like a beach. There's tons of sand looking noise all over the photo. So the few things I can do is I can lower the sharpening, I can adjust the luminance to soften that noise a little bit. And then what I decided to do is actually brighten this photo up in stages. So instead of just exposure bumping the entire shot, I did it with gradient masks from the top, from the bottom, gradually while I was using the noise reduction, which is the luminance slider. And then it got me to somewhere around like here. The photo for me really started to pop and become more of my style and the things that I like to do when I adjusted the color of the sky. Instead of that purpley night sky, I kind of slid it more towards the cool tone, which really changed it into that really north feeling northern lights that I love. Like I love that style. So that's where I landed with it. I cropped it so that we lost a little bit of the sky and made it four by five because there was a lot of information there. I wish I could have seen a little more of the foreground because there wasn't enough of it. But again, like in this instance, I understand like you're going for the Northern Lights. You don't care about the foreground right now. Show me the sky. So I understand this is the final shot I ended up with, which I'm super psyched on. And being able to stand there where this photo was taken and see this, good work, good work. Great photo. Thank you so much for sending it. And that my friends ends PM edits my shots, episode two. Thank you so much to everyone that submitted your photos. I really appreciate it. You know, it takes a lot of courage, like I say, to put your raw work out there for all of these people to see edited by a photographer that probably may or may not have a totally different style than you. That's amazing. Kudos to everyone that sends photos. Thank you so much. I'm gonna continue to make this a regular series because of the feedback that I had, which was amazing and you guys loved it so much. Also, I've linked everyone's Instagram profiles below. So if you wanna go show them some love, double tap some of their photos, say what's up, say hi. I'm sure they would love to hear from you. So those are there for your convenience. Guys, hit the like button if you like this video. Ugh, smash it if that's something that you're into, 2019 style. Subscribe if you aren't already, hit the bell. Then you know when I upload videos and it ensures my future and your future. Then we can keep making videos and talking like this awkwardly at the end of videos. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>great photo. Thank you so much for thank you so much for submitting that. I really thank you so much. God, Peter, please just come on. You, Rory, are from I don't know where you're from. Where are you from? Hang on, let me read this real fast. Got it. I wrote down notes. Mass 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 two. That's what I always want to say. That's not going in bloopers. <laughs> From Great Barrington, Massachusetts. I dude, I mess this up all the time. I want to say Massachusetts, but like I know, I know it's not. It's, it's like cinnamon. Sometimes you mess that one up, or like there's a lot of little weird words that you don't think are weird that are super weird. And uh, that's going in bloopers. Totally missed the camera. I was like, oh, where is it? Where is it? How hard, how hard is it? How hard is it to take your hat off and just cover the lens, man? Like, that's all you had to do. No, it's the mesh. <coughs> it's the mesh. I can't do it with this hat. It would have to be like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, now I hit the mic and the mic's in the way. That's why I do the hand thing. Cause it's just, I'll see you in the next video. Nope, still. Looking around for like a. I'll see you in the next video. Still missed. Hang on. I'll see, I'll see you in the next video. I think my timing was off on that. 
Also, notice this. Is that in focus? Focus! Focus! There. Is it in focus? Yes. You see that mountain? See that mountain logo that's peeling off? The mountain on the side of my sleeve? I bet they got the shadows right on that mountain. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a funny way. Does that work? <laughs> Does that work? That is good. <laughs> I still missed!